Our ankle bones are roughly at the same point, our knees are roughly at the same point, but our hip bones, my hip bones around my iliac crest, that's a nice nerdy word for you guys, is around here, hers is way up here. So she's got longer femur or longer upper thigh. So that will mean when she squats in general, like body weight or barbell or machine, she'll have a harder time staying a little bit more upright than I will. Yeah. And if we go from the side, I want to assess ankle mobility or how far this knee can come forwards over the toe without the heel lifting off. I've got a fair amount of ankle mobility here, of ankle range, and I don't I know. Don't. I, I, don't I, I think she doesn't, I don't know. It's not bad, but there isn't as much as, as I have. And it's also, it could be the same as what I have. It might, eh, honestly it isn't. But um, <laughs> it still also doesn't take into consideration the length of her upper thigh. So those things together will mean that she will, generally speaking, have to put her feet a little bit higher on the sled, or on the, um, the foot plate, on leg presses, or on hack squats, or um, pendulum squats, to be able to squat as low as possible without her hips, or her bum, or her back lifting off the bench. Because remember, all we really care about is get as much knee flexion as possible. Close the gap between hamstring and calf because that will be as much of a stretch through the quads as possible. I don't care if your foot is high or your foot is low because if you're not getting this range here because that's the maximal stretch here through the, through the quads. If I put my feet down lower, I may no longer be able to close that gap. Or I might do that, but I might lose overall stability through my knees. That's where I, I now start compromising the load I use and the intensity I use. Um, at the expense of maybe feeling a bit more in my quads. So I'll show you guys what that might look like on the machine. When I did that first rep and I had to reposition and go up, I yeah. felt like all the weight was yeah. tipping yeah. like that. So a common mistake people make oh, oh, is, so this is where I normally put my feet, around there-ish. In terms of the actual width and toe splay, it just comes down to what's comfortable. If I went parallel with my stance, I can only get to about here before my heels want to lift off. So I naturally want to turn out a bit more, which lets me come down a little bit lower. If I went down here, you could argue, oh, that's going to be more quads. But the second I get to about here, I run out of ankle mobility. I run out of room. And my body will start to collapse like this. And yeah, that's a big stretch in the quads, but I've lost all of that stability there. I'm not going to lift anywhere near as much, which means a lot less tension being placed through my quads, which means less stimulus. So technically, yes, the range of motion of the quads may be there, but the stability has been lost. So I want to go higher, and even though it may be more glute, more adductor, it's going to be a lot more quad because the load I can now shift on the plate, on the, on the machine, and because I'm going to ever get the full range here at my knee. Would you say that like people naturally take the stance that they're strongest in though? Like They should, they should. So people will naturally, without coaching, they will typically go to what's comfortable for them. And the big issue arises is when somebody else comes in and says, that's incorrect, that's wrong. Your feet should only be turned out 15 degrees or you're going to get cancer and your knee's going to explode. <laughs> Everybody's got their own different structure, their own background, their own comfort, their own perception of safety. They will manipulate their body to whatever they feel is best. Now, if you see something that looks glaringly off, or maybe suboptimal, like somebody's sort of squatting like this, like this, maybe that's not ideal from an overall stability standpoint. So, if it's comfortable for them, let them do it. But also use that weird kind of position as a clue of, hmm, why do they want to turn their feet out so much? Is it a structural thing, or is it a mobility thing that maybe could be addressed long term? And it could be both. It could be both. I think that's enough for that little piece.